All right, so I got all that cut. I'm going to start out with this as a base. Okay, so that's sitting nice and flat on the bottom. That's always a nice thing. You don't want it to rock. This is an auto body tool. And for fine detail, and they make a variety of these tools. They're like a file. And right now I'm just trying to clean this up to where it's flat when I look down it, that I can bond another piece easily to it. This is a previous glue area here, so it's sticking up, and I don't want it to. All right, starting out with our first piece. You want to shake this up real good and have it to where it's all mixed inside. You also really don't want to use this in the cold. If this is cold outside to get it to flow better, I'll take a hot water, real hot water, and put it in a bucket and let this sit in it, and it will warm up the can, no matter what the ambient temperatures of the shop is. Right now, I think we're about 50. It's a little cold, but... Now, you can take this urethane foam, and if you had some sort of like a rebar, a thin gauge rebar, or a rod, a, a steel rod, or rods, or big nails, you can actually spray the foam on, put the piece in, and then tack it with something that'll hold it in place. You can even take a strap around it, and then it'll hold and dry, and it'll be done in about, you know, 10, 15 minutes. My favorite way of doing it is just literally put some on the surface, and then stick this into it, pull it off, let it tack up, and then stick it down. It doesn't take a lot. Probably use more than I needed to right there, but I'll tell you what, you put this together, you don't get it apart. And there's there's your footprint of the glue, and it's kind of nice to remember how you have it, so you stick it in the same way you take it out. And I don't really even need that much to stick these together. Now again, that's stuck, it ain't coming off. So now we've got a bulk shape, and I did leave this block out. I could have put it in there, but I'm gonna taper this on it down, just kind of like this one was high on the end, and then taper down to the lower. That's what I plan on doing here. I'm gonna make it a kind of a granite boulder. So now, the down and dirty of how to do this. It, again, there's a lot of ways to carve this thing. And right off the bat, the, uh, the Japanese pull saw, I think this one, the teeth cut either way. This is a tree pruning saw. This is a regular hammer. This here is probably a good 15 years old. I probably need a new blade, but it cuts real good. It's a pull saw. And just literally sniping off corners, you know. That's kind of the idea that we've got right now, is just literally. And this is when you're trying to take a lot of meat out. My more favorite thing is this torch here. It's a weed burner torch hooked to a five gallon can of propane, which is kind of low. And just heat that blade up and it cuts like butter. Again, the smoke rising off of it's probably not a good thing to breathe, but I got the door open, the other door, I got ventilation, I'm good. If I were you guys, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> then. So now, with this guy, it just, it just cuts like butter. Until it gets cool. But he cuts for a long time. I just tend not to breathe when I'm around that. So 
So the objective right now is to get this foam carved to the shape per per perfectly of what you want to end up with so you lose you use very little mud. They got to buy material, you got to measure, you got to mix, you got to apply. You don't want any more than you need and then weight is the other thing. I mean, we don't want to have this thing weigh 5,000 pounds unnecessarily. Alright, well, that's pretty much it with the torch. Now I'm going to take this uh, pole saw, or this pruning saw, and just try and work some of the edges that are straight down. You could always argue and debate whether or not this bulk shape looks like a rock or not. It does for me, and looking around, it's kind of like a shoe almost, but it is something that I think I can make look like a boulder. Again, we're going to splatter coat the texture just like we did on this one. But this is a uh, regular footprint. It's not a rectangle anymore. Kind of like one, but a modified one. And then it's got a high down to a low and a little undulation therein. You get your rock to where you like it in the foam. And if you've made a mistake and you want to, literally, you can take and cut an exact, uh, you know, an L in this and put a whole other block in here. A little piece can be glued in right there. You can, you can take a lot of different techniques to add more bulk to this before you mud it and then recarve it to what you want. I've made mistakes before. Take some of that great foam and just throw, squirt it in here and it'll foam up, let it dry, and then you can carve that. So there's a lot of ways of modifying this. And, and not last but not least, but we get the structure coat on this, which we want to do. In this case, it's going to have the mesh reinforcement, synthetic mesh, about a 3 8 7 inch, and then a splatter coat. That's all I need. And that's what we're going to do. Now, if I get the 3 8 mesh on here with the first 3 8 coat of mortar, uh, if I don't like it, I could poop it out, build it out, and texture and make the formation different just by adding more mud. Again, defining with mud is a technique that we've always done. We call it solid fill, and it's more expensive, but it's not that much. If you've got a little bit of detail you want to pop out after you get it mud, then you can do that. I just thought I'd show you just from that one rock, a pretty good size pile of this cuttings, and we don't throw that away. I could use that for uh, building out rock. I can also throw it through a, a wood chipper, a little craftsman wood chipper, something small. And the discharge of the chipper I take and I convert it from the square into a round shop vac. And I'll vacuum this into a modified 55 gallon drum with the shop vac motor still being there. And I'll make what we call the regrind, the little pellets. The little beads ground up and I'll make a mud with that. I can also use this by sticking pieces of this into wet mud for popping out. If I have a rock right here, throw some mud on it and I can embed that in the mud and I can pop out additional bulk shape very easily. So that's not getting thrown away. Okay, I just swept up all of the uh, foam that I had cut and I put it in this bag that I was going to store it and then I remembered back in the day we used to, we used to live in a little town in Arizona called Wickenburg. They had a landfill. The landfill closed. It was about an hour to Phoenix to go take my construction garbage or have a big dumpster or whatever. You know, it was just not something I wanted to spend money on because I used to go dump at the landfill for free. So I came up with an idea, and this is not one of those contractor bags that is thicker, it's a thinner. 
you can take a sheet of six mil plastic, put garbage in it. Now when I say garbage, I'm speaking about garbage that are, you know, true recyclables. Not any food product. A lot of people say, can I put leaves, Jim, in a bag? The leaves will decompose. It can create a bacteria, a mold. That's not something we're after. So, like in this case, polystyrene is definitely something recyclable. Paper, aluminum cans, I don't care what you got. Funny story was, in 2002, we were remodeling our house because we sold it in 2002. And I was remodeling the kitchen, and I had just put a new dishwasher and set the front dish, the dishwasher on the front porch. And my son came up and says, uh, what do you want me to do with the dishwasher? At that time, we had a beautiful rock pool. It was uh, about four foot out of the ground because the land went like this and the pool was sticking up, flush to the desk. And then over here was about four foot tall out of the ground. And uh, I said to him, go set it by the waterfall, by the spa. And just literally put it up against the boulders. He looked at me like I was crazy. I took some mud and I just covered that rock, that, that dishwasher. And it looked like a square hub. And then I started sticking some more mud. And at that time, I was real big into, we always had styrofoam chunks. And I would literally stick chunks in that, in areas like a topo map on a, geologically speaking. And I would build that out to where our, all my rock at that point was like the round granite. So I made that dishwasher into a boulder and I got rid of it because we didn't have a landfill. I don't care what you've got. If you pile it up and coat over it, you'll have a bulk shape. I've made some big features before with a lot of different, like broken concrete. We we're taking a pool deck up around a pool that was 40 years old. We were rehabbing it, remodeling it into our rock pool. All the pool decking, I laid a little mortar, a little rubble, a little mortar, a little rubber, and we built up big waterfalls with it. I wasn't hauling it away. Depends on what I have at my disposal at the time to say, what am I going to build with? In this case right now, I'm going to take this bag of polystyrene and we're going to do what I call recycle rock. With some, uh, We had a bunch of cement bags on this project, amongst some other trash. And um, I just started putting in the bags, different size that I fill them, and I just stacked them up. Then I take that pool deck brush and I splatter what we call a stabilizer coat. It's about three quarters of an inch. Doesn't have any fiber. I do like the glue in it though. So I just coat that with about three quarters of an inch. Tomorrow you can come by and actually put weight on it. It won't jiggle, it won't wiggle, and it'll be what I call stabilized. And I'll build a rock right over it or a rock outcropping, a waterfall, a big thing. So right now, the first thing to do is to try and cinch this up to where it's, it's the rock is only going to be as big as much as you fill it. And this bag is not plumb full. So right now, and you don't want the, the material inside to poke a hole through the bag, but I'm just going to go ahead and spin that. And it's got a little air in there. That's okay. Uh, now I'm going to take that or tie it into a knot. And then... I don't like these corners on the bag, so a lot of times what I do is I get them up, I fold them over, and just put some tape on them. They don't come undone. Now this bag is cement dusty. I'm going to go all the way around it just to keep those corners down. I've made it one time around. Now I'm going to change directions, and I'm going to go around it. I want to hit this little guy and keep him in, in place. This guy is going to be a boulder right in front of you. I don't care what you put in there as a form to get a generic bolt shape. I'm not saying, like in this case, we were hoping to end up with something that was more precise to the outcome that we were seeking, okay? Here, you're not necessarily going to get a perfect hub or a bulk shape, but you'll get a bulk shape, and it won't cost you nothing. Air is free, and by the way, I just got rid of some trash. Now, if it's built in place, you don't got to turn the rock over and yank all this stuff out. If I was selling this rock, and it was a hollow rock, and it was meant to be lightweight, I'd be taking the trash out. I'm not selling it to my customer like that, but most of the stuff that we were building were built in place. I'll make a rock out of this so fast, it'll make your head spin. What else can you use? I'm very much wanting to make a form, a bulk shape, that'll be air. Keep that in mind. We're gonna make a rock out of this dog.